Okay, so today was another day of tree trimming, moving wood around, and finally disposing of old timbers that I had. Got the cargo trailer, or the dump trailer, completely loaded up again. I'm telling you, man, this is like a an everyday thing for me now almost. But today I'm out here by myself. It's a little hot outside. It's actually beautiful. The temperature is perfect, but the sun is just incredibly hot. So outside temperature is probably 75 degrees, a lot of heat and a little bit of humidity. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and run this over to the dumpster real quick or over to the landfill, empty it out and uh, proceed on to some more projects around the property. So check this out. This is my new tractor attachment. This goes on the three point. Pretty soon it'll be going on my quick connect whenever it comes in. But this is a really, really cool accessory for a tractor because it gives me the capability of doing something that's very important when I have to move stuff around and that is move the trailers around. Okay, so I got this off Amazon. I think it was like 75 bucks prime. It's made out of quarter inch thick steel, reinforced. And then down here, this looks like it is like three eighths inch thick steel, very, very thick steel plate right there. And it comes with a two inch ball and a one and seven eighths inch ball, as well as a, a shackle. Um, it's all bolted into place. It connects to your three point on your tractor and gives you the ability to just back up to your trailer and essentially use your hydraulics and get the thing hitched up and move it around at leisure. So this is really cool. And this is gonna work out really well. I have a, trailer a kind of a trailer tow adapter that also is going to go in here whenever it comes in and it's going to give me a two inch receiver slot so i can put in other types of hitches including my pintle hitch which i'm really looking forward to doing because that will give me the ability just to kind of back up to a trailer hook up to it and drive away without having to get out and pin it all in place which again if you're just moving trailers around really quickly especially if you're mowing the grass and you want to move it so you can get underneath it that's going to come in really handy but you know, when it comes to utilizing a tractor for more than just what you might typically think a tractor is used for, this is really going to come in handy for me. And the attachments are far less expensive than I actually thought they'd be. I figured something like this would be a couple hundred bucks. So to get this in and for it to be built as well as it's built, especially considering the thickness of the steel, the quality of the welds, how thick this bottom little angle iron is. And this isn't just a flat piece. It also curves around to the back. I'm pretty impressed. And, you know, it's got like, a, I think, a 8,000 pound maximum capacity to it, which, in my opinion, you know, that's not going to be anything I'm going to have to worry about getting close to, simply because when you look at the actual capacity that I'll be towing around, it's simply going to be, you know, anywhere between maybe three to 4,000 pounds just to move a trailer around. And I know there's even some folks that have these that have a ball up top so you can hook it up to a goose ball, which is going to also be useful for me if I get one that has that goose ball up top. The thing I got to be cautious of is how much weight I'll be loading on it. This system back here can support a little over 900 pounds. And I, again, just want to be careful that I don't hitch up to a trailer that's too heavy because I can end up either damaging the system or potentially bending something or just, you know, going well over the capacity of what this is designed to do. But very, very cool system. 
pins in place very, very quickly. You don't really need quick release for something like this or a quick connect three point simply because it's so lightweight. This thing probably weighs about 40 pounds. You just put it in place, get it pinned in and you're good to go. Very, very cool though. Got it on Amazon. If this is something you may be interested in, I'll put a link in the description. The only negative I had heard about this was if you're hitched up and you turn too sharp, the A-frame might bind with the other ball. But I can't imagine really being in a situation where I'd want to turn that sharp or where I would need to turn that sharp, and that would be that big of a factor. So, looks really good so far. Let's go check it out. Let's see how this thing works. Okay, so we are here at the black cargo trailer. This has a two and five sixteenths inch coupler right here. So these balls are too small for that coupler. That's a two and that's a one and seven eighths. However, I believe I can take the one and seven eighths and hook it underneath here with this still in the locked and closed position. Again, just for the purpose of moving the trailer around. This is not gonna be to take it out on any roadway or any scenario where I could unintentionally or you know accidentally decouple and this thing become a rolling hazard down the road. So I'm not gonna be doing that, but let me give you an example of how this can come in handy for me right now. So you see how close I am to the back fence right here. If I drop this ramp, it's gonna drop down to about here, which means I can't load anything on the ramp or drive anything up like a lawnmower or a four-wheeler or anything like that because of that. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this thing forward, kind of maneuver it where I wanna move it with the tractor so I don't have to back my truck up here and hitch it in place. This thing only weighs, you know, a couple thousand pounds versus a pickup truck, which is gonna weigh upwards of about 8,000 pounds, 9,000 pounds. And I definitely would prefer driving this around here to move stuff than bringing my truck out here. So we're gonna go ahead and see if I could fit the smaller of the two balls under here, go ahead and lift it up just enough to move it where I wanna move it and then put it back down. Now the trailer is pretty much empty. I don't have anything in there, but if I did have anything in here right now, I certainly wouldn't wanna put it behind the axle. I would not wanna remove weight off of the tongue here. I'd wanna move as much weight towards the tongue, just so again, there's no chance that if I hit a bump or if I hit something, that this thing's gonna all of a sudden come undone and smack into the ground. And then the other thing I wanna do is make sure my tongue jack is up and it's not gonna be in a position to hit the ground either. Now this is very similar to how a dealership might move a trailer around. They'll simply hook up to it. They don't really have time to back a pickup truck up to it, couple the whole thing, lock it in place, put the chains. They don't do any of that. They'll simply take a forklift or a tractor, back up to it, lift the three point underneath it, move it where they wanna move it and drop it off. So we're gonna use this setup right now, see how it works, see what my maneuverability looks like. And uh, we'll see if this actually makes life a little easier when it comes to moving trailers around the property. Well, that worked like a charm. You know, working with the hydrostatic transmission to move it right in place and get it to stop without rolling is about the only challenge, but once you get it under there, yeah, the smaller of the two balls just goes right up into the coupler and does what it needs to do. Lifted it right off of the pad. I was able to pull it forward. Let's see how I can move it. Now, the thing you want to keep in mind here is your visibility around the sides of the trailer are non-existent at this point with a cargo trailer like this. If it was like a utility trailer, something small or flat, you probably wouldn't have an issue. But because of the, the width of this cargo trailer, this is an eight and a half foot wide cargo trailer, I'm so close to the thing that I have no idea how close I am to something behind it, how far away I am, how close I am to objects beside it. So this tree right here and this tree back here could absolutely be obstacles. If I'm moving around, everything can be an obstacle. If I turn too sharp, the back end can swing around too much and that could be an obstacle. So you definitely wanna be very careful if you're gonna be using a tractor to move around a trailer with a tall, wide profile because it could absolutely obscure what's going on around you. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it forward a little bit so I can see the entire profile of things. 
You know, if for some reason it became too hitch heavy, I could put weight in the front and kind of counterbalance it as well. But it doesn't really seem to be much of an issue at this point. And this trailer at the tongue, as it sits right now, is about 600 pounds. So let's pull it forward a little bit. Okay, not gonna lie, I'm pretty impressed. You know, I really shouldn't be that impressed because I didn't really doubt that it could do what I just did. This is certainly not something that should have been difficult for the tractor, but it goes to show that if you have a tractor, it's that Swiss Army knife that everyone says. It's that universal tool that can be used for so many different things around your property, including moving your trailer around. And I'll tell you, even using a backup camera on a truck, all the modern technology that you might think, this is still, a little easier because you're literally looking right down at the ball so whenever you get underneath it you just raise your three point up hitch it in place and there's enough tongue weight on here at this time that i just don't really have to worry about the weight being too much for what we're doing with the tractor so the only thing i want to again express is that you know we weave it between these two trees to bring it back and from the driver's seat of the tractor, you just don't see around this thing. You can't see above it. You're literally just looking at the front of the trailer and there's not a lot of visibility when it comes to what's going on around to the sides. And if I'm backing it up to this fence right here and I wanna be sure I don't hit the fence or I wanna get the right amount of distance, I'm gonna to need to set up some type of a visual aid so I know specifically how far away from the fence that I am. Because again, the whole point is that I can move the trailer, position it in a way more conveniently than I can in the truck. In the truck, it's got its advantages because I got the mirrors and I can see around it. And I'm far enough ahead of it that I can see what's going on with the back of the trailer. In this case, I don't have any of that visibility. I'm literally looking at the front V shape of the trailer and it's created all sorts of blind spots. Now, again, if this was a flat deck trailer, like a cargo trailer or something that was just completely flat that I could see over and around, wouldn't be a problem. I wouldn't have any issues at all. But because of the type of trailer this is, it makes backing it up, maneuvering it, pulling it forward, kind of a bit more hazardous, again, because I just don't know what's taking place. But no problem at all. Now, what I'm gonna try to do is back this up and put it where I want it. Um, I didn't take any visual cues like I probably should have just to know, you know, how much further I needed to move it, but I'm gonna see how much visibility I actually have to move it back and get it about 20 feet away from the back fence there, just in case I wanna load something on the back of it. I'm not right up against the fence whenever I drop the gate. So let's see how that turns out. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot more difficult than I thought with a trailer like this. Uh, you know, I had a couple spotters up there that were telling me which way I need to get it going and you just have no visibility at all around the trailer. You can't even tell if you're going straight or not because from my perspective, it looked like I was doing fine. But from what they were telling me, I started veering off one way and then veering off the other way. So, you know, it's good to quickly grab your trailer and move it but you just have to understand what your limitations are. Now, I don't know if I'll have the same limitations with my smaller trailer right here because I might have a bit more visibility into what the trailer is actively doing. But with a trailer this large or with a travel trailer or even a smaller cargo trailer, you, you take some risks whenever you tow it with the tractor. If, unless you have just everything clear and you have a, a reference point that you could use to know when you're going straight. My reference point was this tree that was actually a kind of difficult reference point to use, but it works and it tows it. Um, backing it up, not as easy as I thought it would be. And you know, again, when you're sitting in the tractor seat and you're looking back at the front of this thing, that's really when you realize, man, you have no visibility. If you have mirrors around the side, something like that, it would probably help, actually it would help tremendously. But without mirrors, you know, you kind of have some struggles there. But that thing is really cool. I absolutely uh, think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it, especially for smaller trailers and just getting things moved around the property. But yeah, this is a pretty cool little setup. 
has both the two and the one and five eighths inch ball. Has a shackle there in the center, connects to your three point. I don't believe you'd be able to connect this to a quick disconnect or a quick hitch because it's wider than most of those. This is about 30, probably 32 inches wide. And most of your quick connects are gonna be like 24 in that range. So this is certainly not gonna fit in most of those. But it is a very, very cool piece of equipment to have. And this right here would also block it from fitting in your quick hitch because whenever you go to connect to it, you need this room underneath to slide into place. Anyways, I'll put a link in the description of this video if this is something you might have use for in your tractor if you plan on moving a trailer around. If you have a better idea or a better suggestion, especially, you know, when it comes to these larger cargo trailers, please let me know. I'd love to, love to find out what I can do to improve what I have going on here. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.